Hello friends, welcome to Lucent Mains Counterfeits program brought to you by Neo AS and today we will be discussing about India's neighborhood first policy. Even before becoming the Prime Minister, Narendra Modi had hinted that his foreign policy will actually focus on improving ties with India's immediate neighbors which is being termed as neighborhood first policy in the foreign policy circles and he started well by inviting all heads of the states of South Asian countries to his inauguration and uh, on the second day of office uh, he held bilateral talks with all of them individually which was dubbed as a mini SARC summit by the media. India and its neighbors. India's neighbors are Pakistan, Afghanistan, China, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. India has always been known as a peace loving country and has always strived hard to champion the cause of peace in the world. With India being situated in a politically turmoil geography, her relations with the neighbors are all, always characterized by ups and downs. The foreign policy orientations and attitudes of all our neighbors towards India exercises profound influence on the framers of India's foreign policy. In relation with neighbors, India has been following the five principles of peaceful coexistence coexistence known as the Punch Shield Treaty whereby India follows non-interference in others internal affairs and respect for each other's territorial unity, integrity and sovereignty. Also non-state actors like business communities and diaspora contribute towards the relationship via people to people contacts. With the exception of China and Pakistan, India has a cordial and friendly relations with all her neighbors, though problems keep brewing up. Now, what are the cause of concerns in the neighborhood? It, it is in South Asia where troubles are mounting that India cannot succeed in this volatile area without a mix of both hard and soft power. Also in South Asia, India is witnessing Chinese incursion into its sphere of influence as China seeks to be the foremost power in the entire Asian region. India is one of the few countries that are still outside its sphere of influence and the concerns related to other neighbors are one is how to deal with a new government with the new government in Nepal comprising of the left alliance uh, which is going closer to China. India also needs to contemplate the prospect of prolonged unrest and possible violence both communal and terror related in neighboring Bangladesh. The radical elements in Bangladesh are pro-Pakistan. The current Sheikh Hasina government which is regarded as pro-India is also tilting towards China. Another and a more imminent challenge for India is to sort out the imbroglio in the Maldives islands which is threatening to spill out of control. Anti-India tendencies have steadily increased and there has been a pronounced tilt in favor of China. Now the present, uh, the outgoing president of Maldives has been pro-China and the new president Ibrahim Soli, India thinks that he would be tilting towards India again. India also cannot allow Afghanistan to collapse or cease to exist as a state. The daily massacre of innocent citizens, men, women and children, also civilian officials, marks the start of the complete collapse of a system of governance. This is something that demands India's critical attention and especially for a display of its leadership skills. India has supported the Afghan led peace process and, and has marked a departure from a position of not talking with Taliban and recently India sent, a, sent two retired officials to the Moscow talks for the Afghan peace process which includes Taliban delegates. So Pakistan has been a concern since independence. Even after losing all the wars against India, Pakistan shows no sign of altering its anti-India trajectory. It has changed track to, se track to sending terrorists as opposed to fighting overt wars. Democratic India can hardly afford to let things slide without effectively trying to find ways and means to change the situation which is certainly not to our advantage. Now the neighborhood first policy of the government aims to improve interaction with its 
immediate neighbors and the Indian Ocean island states. It achieves various goals through a holistic approach to regional foreign policy like connectivity. Connectivity is a big facet of this policy with India entering into memorandum of understanding with members of South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation or SARC. India has entered into memorandum of understanding with SARC countries for cooperation in areas of trade infrastructure, commercial linkages and transit facilities. These agreements ensure a free flow of resources, energy, goods, labor and information across borders. Research support by India to its neighbor is another vital component of this approach in terms of financial aid, equipment, human resource training and diplomatic alliances. Example is that India provides immense, provided immense assistance in the form of over 1700 tons of relief material and medical assistance to its neighboring Nepal in the aftermath of 2016 earthquake. Also regional institutions are an important mechanism for India to emerge as a regional leader in South Asia. In the furtherance of this, India has participated and invested in SARC as a vehicle for development in the region. However, it has also begun to initiate issue specific groups that can achieve faster and more effective progress without being held back due to a lack of consensus. One such example is the Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal grouping for energy development for which a joint working group of the four countries was set up. Now, what are the advantages of such a policy? One is leveraging international partnership to promote India's domestic development, ensuring a stable and multipolar balance of power in the Indo-Pacific and dissuading Pakistan from supporting terrorism. India has reiterated that terror and talks cannot go together and this is supported by India's neighbors as well. Also advancing India's representation and leadership on, um, on matters of global governance is another sort out goal of the neighbor first policy. The population of South Asia is about one fourth of the world's population and a World Bank report in 2014 said that South Asia is the fastest growing region in the world and therefore to strengthen economic cooperation and increasing the pace of economic growth so as to improve the quality of life of people of South Asia would be another added advantage. So giving mutual assistance and cooperation areas like agriculture, scientific development etc and promoting social progress and cultural development. Now we will look into the Indian neighbors. Now first is Sri Lanka. India and Sri Lanka share a 2500 year old relationship built upon a foundation of intellectual, cultural, religious and linguistic interaction. The major dispute with India has been that of the alleged practice of Sri Lankan Navy shooting at Indian fishing trawlers sailing from the coast of Tamil Nadu. In Sri Lanka, China holds strategic real estate and which could also be fortified militarily in the future. At present, it means China has a stake in the intern politics of Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka handed over the strategic port of Hambantota, which is expected to play a key role in China's Belt and Road Initiative. Although the Sri Lankan government says it will not allow Chinese military activity in Hambantota port, it has triggered alarm in New Delhi as it has implications for India's national security. Now, currently, there is a constitutional crisis in Sri Lanka which has deepened as the Prime Minister was sacked and pa the Parliament was dissolved by the President Maitripala Sirisena. This has cleared the way for a snap election nearly two years ahead of schedule. Now the next neighbor is Maldives. India's policy with Maldives has been on support for stability, political pluralism and development. Diplomatic relations with the Maldives were established in 1972. Now, the, currently there is no FTA free trade agreement with India and Maldives. Maldives and India do not have a free trade agreement. However, Maldives and China have entered into free trade agreement. Maldives is another country in the South Asian region 
the south asian region is uh, india's region of influence and india is the foremost power in this region and uh, maldives and china entering into free trade agreement is a cause of concern because india fears that maldives would be tilting towards china and using it to balance india now maldives growing closeness with china both china and pakistan stepping up their strategic inroads into maldives under president yamin radicalization grew rapidly and it was said often said that the archipelago accounted for one of the highest numbers of foreign fighters in syria india can ill afford a neighbor which fails to check such a radicalization process unstable politics even if it may be democratic is more suitable to india than an autocratic one because the current autocratic ruler had shown till towards china which has not been in india's favor and uh, yamin had requested new delhi to withdraw indian helicopters from the maldives air fields which india had gifted to them in 2013 which showed a deepening of crisis between the between india and maldives now work permits are not currently being issued to indian nationals in maldives as well it is expected that with the new government coming in some of maldives arrangements with china would be looked at and possibly india's concerns with regards to china and india would also be addressed next is nepal the diplomatic relations between india and nepal were was established in 1947 and it encourages democracy pluralism stability and socio economic progress of both the nations now modi's initial outreach to nepal in 2014 managed to strike the right chord and captured the imagination of people and policy makers in nepal government of india's support and aid after the nepal earthquake has significantly strengthened strengthened the relations india however objected to nepal's constitution of 2015 feeling it favored the upper caste hill tribes and disenfranchised the tarus madesis and the janjatias communities that lived in the low hills or the valley now ties between india and nepal deteriorated after protesters on the india nepal border blockaded the movement of goods vehicles slowing or stopping critical fuel and medical supplies towards nepal and this fueled anti india sentiments in nepal now kathmandu has already signed the belt and road initiative which is likely to cement china's communication links with nepal prime minister modi assured nepal on his visit recently that china, nepal topped india's neighborhood first policy he has also announced a rupees 100 crore package to develop the hindu pilgrimage city of janakpur next is bangladesh india was the first nation to acknowledge bangladesh as a separate and independent state and instituted the diplomatic relations in 1971 itself the real benefit for india's neighborhood first approach is that bangladesh has provided great strategic opportunity to change south asia's geopolitical situation uh, bangladesh continues to be the bright spot for india's neighborhood policy despite attempts by pro pakistan radical groups and isi sponsored elements to derail the flourishing bilateral relationship Bangladesh has emerged as a key gateway for India's sub-regional initiatives like the Bay of Bengal initiative for multi-sectoral technical and economic cooperation the BIMSTEC and the Bangladesh Bhutan India Nepal initiative the BBIN initiative in July 2014 New Delhi and Dhaka accepted the judgment of international tribunal for the law of the sea and settled a long standing maritime dispute between the two countries resolution on the maritime boundary line between bangladesh and india in the exclusive economic zone and the continental shelf within and beyond 200 nautical miles were accepted by both sides prime minister narendra modi and his bangladeshi counterpart sheikh hasina jointly launched the construction of india bangladesh friendship product pipeline project through video conferencing despite growing bond homi the long standing deal on the sharing of waters of the tista river is yet to be signed between the two countries next is afghanistan 
India and Afghanistan have developed a deep relation through historical and cultural links. Indo-Afghan relations have been further strengthened by the strategic partnership agreement signed in 2011. Modi's first Ag Afghan visit came in December 2015 during which he had inaugurated the Afghanistan parliament building that was constructed with Indian assistance. India's assistance for reconstruction and development in Afghanistan stands at US dollar 2 billion. Afghanistan President Ghani has been extremely eager to reduce landlocked Afghanistan's lands on Pakistan territory for trade and to corrode Pakistan's undesirable influence over Afghan affairs by improving ties with India. India and Af Afghanistan have also launched an air freight corridor in June 2017 and despite periodic op optimistic forecast of the Taliban being in retreat, terrorists and, and the and Taliban terrorism, various terrorist groups under check, Afghan situation is yet to stabilize. And with regards to the peace process which I mentioned earlier, India supports an Afghan owned and Afghan led peace process. Next is Bhutan. The diplomatic relations between India and Bhutan were established in 1968 with the appointment of a resident representative of India in Thimphu which is the capital of Bhutan. Bhutan is a landlocked nation and is highly dependent on India for access to sea trade and development aid. Mutually beneficial economic linkages between India and Bhutan have been an important element in the bilateral relationship. Now the strategic importance is the Chumbi Valley which is situated in the trijunction of Bhutan, India and China and is 500 kilometers away from the chicken neck in North Bengal which connects and connects the northeast with the rest of the country and therefore India's presence near the uh, presence and relation with Bhutan is highly critical for India. The hydropower projects were, were delays in construction and commissioning in Bhutan by Indian companies have led to the led to Bhutan's burgeoning national debt. India also needs to focus on pol policing cross-border trade. Also the goods and service tax still hurts Bhutanese exporters and demonetization has left lasting scars on the banking system. India's effective neighborhood approach will prove conducive towards building a cohesive and durable relationship with Bhutan. Next is Pakistan. From independence in 1947, relations with, between India and Pakistan have been tense with the talks around economic integration, cooperation and peace running parallel to a constant threat of war. Since the Patan Kut terror attack and the invitation for Pakistan intelligence officials to join an investigation into the attack, the bilateral relation has hit a dead end. Surgical strike was launched by India as a response to Pakistan's frequent provocations along the border and the line of control and frequent violations of the ceasefire along the line of control have also contributed to the failure of talks. Um, the Modi government's policy of diplomatically isolating Pakistan does seem to be succeeding to some extent but at the same time Islamabad has stepped up its diplomatic efforts to engage uh, Beijing a Moscow and Tehran. A planned meeting between India and Pakistan's external affairs ministers had been called off due to brutal killings of our security personnel by Pakistan based entities and the recent release of a series of 20 postage stamps by Pakistan glorifying a terrorist and terrorism. I mean some of the reasons quoted by India for calling off talks. The virtual collapse of a Pakistan policy seems to affect Pakistan less and India more. <laughs> Lastly and importantly, China. The personalized diplomacy during visit of Indian PM to China showed its the limits soon became apparent. In mid 2016, China blocked India's bid to join the nuclear supplies group despite a meeting between the two leaders in Tashkent on the margins of the Shanghai, Co Shanghai Cooperation Summit. Also the 73 day standoff at Doklam last year and the accompanying rhetoric which almost threatened to push the two countries towards a full blown out war. India is also wary of the Belt and Road Initiative of China 
India responded to all this by voicing its skepticism regarding Belt and Road Initiative and stepping up maritime engagement with the US and Japan and reviving the quadrilateral security dialogue. There's a, there's a widespread concern in India's policy making circles of Beijing's expanding presence in Pakistan, Nepal and now in Maldives. Both countries have also realized the risk of downward spiral of confrontation and are pragmatic enough to understand the need to restore a degree of balance to the relationship, especially after the 73 day standoff at Doklam. Now, Prime Minister Modi and President Xi Jinping held a first informal summit in Wuhan in China on April 2018 to exchange views on overarching issues of bilateral and global importance and to elaborate their respective visions and priorities for national development in the context of the current and future international situation. The summit has had positive impact on ties and Indian government advised officials to stay away from events commemorating 60 years of Dalai Lama's exile in India. Both sides have agreed to undertake a joint project in Afghanistan. It is clear that there is an effort to bring the relationship on track. Now, what are the achievements so far? Oh, first, Modi invited all the SARC leaders to his swearing in ceremony and the subsequent day he held bilateral talks with all of them individually. South Asian satellite launched by India is intended to support telecommunication broadcasting and internet services, disaster management, telemedicine, teleeducation, weather forecasting in the whole of South Asia. The launch of South Asia satellite repre represents a wonderful integration of India's neighborhood first strategy. India and Bangladesh have signed pact to operationalize the historic land boundary agreement between both nations. The operationalization of the land boundary agreement paves the way for exchange of 162 enclaves under the control of either countries as per the 1974 pact. India-Bangladesh development cooperation have scaled new heights and with India pledging a dollar two billion line of credit for Bangladesh, the largest single line of credit for any country committed by India. India is planning to build Trincomalee port in Sri Lanka. The port is envisioned as a, as Indian counterweight to Chinese developments at Hamban Tota port. India and Nepal have signed a memorandum of understanding to build strategic railway line connecting Raksol city in Bihar in India to Kathmandu, the capital of Nepal. But what are the shortfalls of the policy? One is India's incre increasing tendency to interfere in the domestic affairs of its smaller neighbors, either citing security implications or to offset unfriendly strategic choices. India interfered in Nepal's internal matters when their constitution was amended, which the citizens and government of Nepal opposed. Also, it is being said that India had interfered in the election process in Sri Lanka which brought Maithripala Sirisena into power because India had held that President, the former President Rajapaksa was pro-China and therefore India had to bring in someone who would be who would tilt towards India. Also, last year ended with serious ceasefire violations along the line of control with a 200 percent increase in number of violations. Pakistan has also not refrained from persisting with its proxies like lashkar e taiba and the Jaishi Mohammed in its war with India. Pakistan shows no sign of altering its anti-India trajectory and China has embarked on a series of infrastructure development projects, most of them as part of its Belt and Road Initiative, which many strategic experts fear can leave India isolated regionally and encircled by Chinese allies. India has been struggling to compete with China across different regions where many nations are now economically dependent on China. The biggest threat of this is that China would become the hegemonic power in Asia, uh, Asia and uh, India would lose its foremost power status in South Asia also and would have to play second fiddle to China in this region. Now, the anti-India sentiments is slowly getting rooted in the minds of people of Bhutan due to India's big brother attitude and 
its economic dependence to India. India may use this economic dependence for its gains in the region. Now, demonetization. Demonetization rattled countries like Nepal, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Sri Lanka and Myanmar which had encouraged the use of Indian currency as a parallel currency within their borders. Now, what is the way forward? As the largest country, India should be leading the South Asia project, establishing cross-border transport and communication links, opening up its markets and its own transport infrastructure to its neighbors and becoming the preferred source of capital and technology for their development. Instead of fearing Chinese inroads into the subcontinent, the only effective response could be to build a countervailing presence which is eminently possible given our geographical as well as cultural proximity to our neighbors. Our security preoccupations including cross-border terrorism and activities of other non-state actors are likely to be addressed with greater seriousness if we encourage our neighbors to build a stake in India's own prosperity and capabilities. India's immediate neighborhood directly impacts India geopolitically, geostrategically and geoeconomically because of its vicinity. Whatever be the ambit of India's reach elsewhere, India's principal focus will need to be on this neighborhood. Thank you.